have uh, Dr. Benita Stanton, who's the dean of the uh, medical school. We have Kevin D. Simone. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Nope. There Hello. are Kevin. Matt Barowitz. Matt, thank you. And Dr. Jeffrey Bochamp. So, uh, welcome. If uh, you can just give us an update on where we are with the medical school and any questions <laughs> the commissioners have, and so maybe even where, with the allied health club. You know, what's the plan there? So, Great. thank you, Dean. Appreciate you coming here, and uh, we always look forward to working with you in the future. So. Well, likewise, and we're delighted to be invited and to be here. And um, in addition to the, the agenda that you just outlined, um, I'd like to add two things. Number one is some thoughts about um, working together with the community over time, and also making sure that you all know that if any problems arise at any point, be sure to contact any one of us. Um, the last thing we would want to know is that there was some issue that was festering that we couldn't have taken care of much earlier. So, um, so we're, we're um, moving along very well on um, our very long-winded name of the School of Medicine, the Seton Hall Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine. So again, if you know of any donors with a short name, we would love to hear about them. <laughs> um, but it's. It's, it's very exciting. Um, I've been here almost a year now. I arrived, I think, March 10th of last year. And I never would have guessed how much fun this would be. And part of the fun has been the acquaintances that I've met. And I include um, you and, and your team. And I hope we get to know each other uh, much better over time. Um, the, we're about to complete the first real phase of, of, of the medical school. Um, and that is the submission of, in essence, the application to be accredited. Uh, there are three parts to that. The first part is a, a 12 chapter, they call it standard application, called the data collection instrument. And we're at the point now where we're really beginning to compile it. We're in the final stages. And it'll be you know, six or 700 pages. And it's everything about a medical school. So the, the opening is describing the towns a bit that we're in, the uh, Hackensack Meridian and their history, Seton Hall and their history, then uh, a little bit about the structure of the, the dean's cabinet, um, and then the next section gets a little bit more into the people. Um, then the third so-called standard begins to drill down a bit more, and it's beginning to look at the faculty. Um, and some of the broad issues about students. And then you have um, about five chapters that are dealing with the curriculum. And that's been great, as I've mentioned to a couple of you. Uh, we've seen a real revolution in the way we teach adults in the last 20 years. And a lot of medical schools, the existing ones, haven't really kept up with it. Uh, although now our licensing organization, the Liaison College for Medical e Education, is requiring a switch in the others. But those of us who are coming in now <coughs> aren't weighed down by all that baggage. And so we're able to come in um, using the, the newer techniques, techniques that are really developed so that physicians can be trained early on to be continuous learners. The, the information just turns over too fast. You could not possibly practice medicine for more than a couple of years if you weren't constantly learning new things. So it, our whole method will be teaching people how to continue learning, having the basics, etc. cetera. And uh, just last week and this week, we've really gotten down now into the specifics. And in those chapters, we laid out the broad uh, parameters of, of what we would be doing in the curriculum, including, and I mentioned this uh, to a couple of you, an option to graduate in, in, in three years um, and go directly into residency. If they choose to take that route, then they would be in the Hackensack Meridian system. And that would be a wonderful thing. It's a fabulous hospital system. And also, we would be so delighted if many of our graduates would stay here, A, for residency, and B, forever. Um, so we remain, our, our vision remains the same as the last time we spoke. And that is that every person in New Jersey, and for that matter, the US, would enjoy the same levels of health and well-being regardless of their socioeconomic status or, or their race. Um, and then our mission is that we want to train every single physician who graduates from our medical school 
to be constantly thinking about the community when they are treating a patient because health and illness occur where you live, not in the hospital. And so when you're prescribing something, when you're performing a surgery, when you're doing follow-up, you have to remember what that person is going back into and make sure that what you're treating them with is going to work with the lifestyle they're in. At the same time, hopefully, and that's one of the other things we're going to be teaching our students, how to work with the community, how to become a real partner with the community, which doesn't mean lecturing the community like I'm doing right now, but listening to the community like I hope to do in a couple minutes. Um, and then the remaining chapters at the end of that are things like the admissions process and then what we're doing to make sure that our students are, are getting fair treatment, good treatment, reasonable financial aid, etc. That is the DCI, the data collection instrument, and that will be submitted April 1st, along with a very interesting document that we're required to submit, and it's called the self-study. So after you've spent, which we have, a full year writing the DCI and thinking through all these issues, then they want to know in 35 pages what's wrong with your data collection instrument, with your vision. Where are the pitfalls? Where can things go amok? And what are you going to do to avoid that? And what do you do if, nevertheless, something does mess up a little bit? And that's a really important thing to have, because we might use all these superlatives, but of course there are areas that you know, we're not sure about. And then the final thing is just um, the, the accrediting agency now requires that all medical schools have a constant active strategic plan that they're modeling very carefully. Um, because if you wait between the cycles of accreditation, uh, too much can go wrong. And we just don't have that liberty in training medical students. We can't let something go wrong in their training. So all that will go in in April. We hope to hear we will hear in June if we're getting a site visit. If we're getting a site visit, all of us will be visited by um, the, uh, a team from the LCME probably in September, maybe early October. Um, and then early in 2018, we'll hear from <coughs> the LCME, actually from its parent organization, um, AAMC, if we have preliminary accreditation. And then Assuming that all goes well and we're optimistic, the first class will come in July of 2018, four months later. So we'll be doing a lot of preparatory work <coughs> without the students. Um, up, and, and we'll have a very good sense after the site visit whether things look good or not. Um, however, we cannot accept nor solicit any application until we know for sure. So those last four months will be really busy. Our first class will be about 50 <coughs> students although ultimately our class size will be 125. Are there any things I left out that I should have mentioned, do you think? I think that's right. Any questions? Any? I, I have a question about the nursing. Well, I remember when we were meeting regularly that um, the nursing was going to be the first leg of this. And, and, and the date that I recall, and I don't know how you guys are making out with the retrofit of the building, but I thought that there was a chance that in 2017, the fall of 2017, was the targeted date for the nursing to come over. Great memories. Um, so first of all, nursing and then the School of um, Health Science and Management are also coming out. Um, virtual, virtually all, but not quite all, of nursing is coming out because their undergraduate program, their RN program, is also undergraduate, but their first year and a half the undergraduates are doing a much more traditional college <coughs> curriculum. They will stay on the South Orange campus for a year and a half, and then for their last two and a half years, they will also be doing all their work out in the, um, we now call it the health campus. Um, um, likewise, SHINS, that has the PA program, the occupational therapy, physical therapy, otolaryngology, um, um, a speech therapy, um, and then a couple of graduate programs, the entire college will move out. Um, there were, if you recall, there were some delays in the negotiation over the, the transfer of the land, uh -huh. and that set us back a bit. So as the plans are now, the, um, the building will all be done. Right now, as you know, we're in, in the 
uh, we're just about done with the demolition inside the building, and then we'll start um, with the reconstruction of it. That will all be completed by next January or February. That will take about a year total, as well as doing the outside uh, landscaping. Um, and then, of course, there needs to be an approval process. And then probably the first school to move in will be the medical school at that point. So we would probably move in in about April. Um, uh, and that's because our class is coming in July. And then shins and nursing will um, <coughs> move over during the summer before their students all arrive. So I don't know um, when they were originally hoping in, in 2017, but, but that is now pushed back. I guess it sounds like a little less than a year from then. So then just to be clear, so I understand you correctly. So then 2018, June will be the medical students. The medical students will arrive in July. July. Of and then the shin program. Well, well, that'll be that summer, that same summer. Nursing. Yeah, they. You're right. That they initially were thinking that if things got done, they could come in 17. But they realized they couldn't come halfway through a year. Where they started, they had to finish. So it slipped a year, and so we would start when they start. Um, which I don't know is the end of August I think or the something like that. So yeah. It's, yeah, both those schools would be on the same academic calendar. So when you say there'll be 50 medical students, how many students do you think will be part of that SHIM program, as you call it? Well, um, the, the the nursing students that will come over, it will be um, at that time about 500, I believe. I'm not positive about that. And I think Shins, that's right. okay, and Chims is it's about a little bit more. yeah. So in total, there'll be almost a thousand students in that first year, um, and then as the medical school increases, at our maximum, we'll be up to about six hundred. So you know, at any given time, there would be you know, around twelve hundred, fourteen hundred students. That's great. Although um, Chims and the School of Nursing are also planning on increasing their size over time. And the School of Medicine is planning on starting some um, graduate programs, uh, so it will it will get somewhat larger than that. But for three schools, that's where we anticipate being for the first few years. And when you first move in, how many employees will be on the campus? Like in, you said, like April. Um, well, I can answer how many would be there for the School of Medicine, but I I don't know, and that's okay. a great question, and we will get back to you. Unless do you happen to know? I don't know it in my head, but we yeah. do have those numbers okay. because they were important to the state and and to all of you as well. The, the total number, and you know we had that number obviously because we had to build the right number of offices right. and everything. So. So for the the stationary people that will be there for the School of Medicine in that first year, it'll be about. 80. Um, but then, of course, we have lots of faculty from Hackensack Meridian, as well as some of the other um, hospitals that we've been, been working with.